Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart and welcome to another painting tutorial. And this time, the first of what I think will be many actually for Games Workshop's Battle of Five Armies, um, the Middle Earth um, setting game back from 2005, I think. Um, there's some other videos on the channel as I've uh, started to sort of delve into this box that I never managed to buy first time round. Um, and as I paint my way through the collection and some of the additions I do, I'm going to do a mixture of, of small painting tutorials as I go. Some of you may be familiar with the painting tutorials I've been doing with um, Warlord Games' Epic Battles range, which is slightly larger than this, 13.5mm, um, whereas these are 10mm models. Um, but I'll be using very, very similar techniques. But I'll be starting from fresh, and I won't be uh, referring to those videos for, for techniques. So, so. The way I'm going to approach painting all of these miniatures is using a, a zenith or highlight or pre-shade, depending on what you want to call it. Essentially, what you're creating is a, a grayscale looking miniature, so that when you paint glazes over the top, and I'll mostly be using um, contrast paints and maybe some army painters speed paints, when you paint them over the top, they're thin enough to show through the, the highlights and the shadow that you've already got underneath. So what I'm going to do is a black prime, as you can see, I've already done that there. And then I'm gonna use the airbrush to do a top down layer of white. You can use gray. I find a miniatures this size. Um, for the, the methods I'm gonna to use today, the white is, is spot on for it. So I mainly do top down, but a little bit from the sides as well. And I'm just leaving a little bit of that black under the recesses, very thin light layers with the airbrush. And what you tend to find is it looks slightly gray and I'll build up um, to a white in, in some of the more top areas. So as you can see, just a really light dusting. And apologies for the whirring airbrush compressor in the background. Now to really reinforce the white and get the most out of the glazes, I want to hit the top detail already and this will save a lot of the need to go back in and do final highlights afterwards and the way I'm going to do that is with dry brushing. So I am use these uh, relatively expensive um, dry brushes from Artist Opus. Um, I thought I'd give them a go, I thought they might uh, I thought they might fall apart on me quite quickly, um, but um, I'm I'm you know, probably ten months on, nine, ten months on using them now, and I've been extremely happy with them. I know a lot of other brands have now started to to produce these as well. In fact, one of my favourite brands, Rosemary and Co, who produce some Series 33 watercolour brushes, which are absolutely fantastic for miniature painting, and and uh, I tend to be my go-to when I can't get hold of broken toad brushes, which I can't at the moment. Um, and they've they've brought out their own of these recently. I haven't picked them up yet. I'll do probably try them when I replace these. And I don't know if this is true or not, but um, I've heard that um, Rosemary & Co actually um, make the brushes for, for Artist Opus. So, but anyway, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of paint on the end of that brush. Take most of it off. People know how to dry brush, but you really want to get the majority of, majority of it off. So you can now see we're left with um, pretty much a grayscale miniature. Picked out lots of the detail there, which not only makes it easier to see when you're painting, but as I've already alluded to, is, is really, really handy for when you're painting your glazes over the top afterwards, because it just gives you the natural shade and natural highlights, meaning you have to do less later on. I will add, um, and let you know the whites that I've been using, because I know people will ask. I'm a big fan of Vallejo whites. I don't seem to be too chalky and they seem to thin well and you get nice smooth finishes from them. So through the airbrush I was using Model Air White and um, for the dry brushing it tends to be my go-to white other than that is Model Color Off Air and um, Off White. Um, Game Air Dead White is also very good through the airbrush. Now what colours to use for painting your wags or your wolves? Um, I think you can use a, a mixture of colours. I quite like the idea that they'll um, have a range of, of fur types and colours and so I'm going to be using a bit of a mixture. I'm going to use a uh, gore grunt of fur, I'm going to be using some wild wood, I'm going to be using black templar on a few, um, I'm going to be maybe even you do a couple in snake bite leather um, and for the first one I'm going to be using contrast Saigor brown. 
Now, Saigal Brown it has a very, very strong pigment, and I usually thin it 50-50, and I just use water for that. I find that's absolutely fine. Um, and it's quite a, a dark but um, warmish brown. It's got some hints of red in there, I, I believe. Um, all I'm going to do is just paint that over the fur, and you'll see the highlighted areas just show through slightly. I've just swapped over to the other strip so that first one can dry before I add another colour and I'm going to be using Gore Grunter Fur for one of these. Now this is a kind of a, a reddish brown, um, much warmer colour, closer to the kind of gingery spectrum I suppose. Um, and again, as you can see, as soon as I place it on the miniature, the paint is running into those recesses and on where I've got the highlight and the dry brushing it's just giving you some natural colour there and it's really really showing up the fur. Right then next colour I'm going to use snake bite leather for this one now obviously when you're painting a whole unit you want to mix up the colours even more I obviously showed you a lot more colours than I have wags in the video so far, or at least on this one stand anyway. Um, so it's about mixing them up a little bit and creating a little bit of variety, and that's what I intend to do in, in the army. Um, so I'll show you just these four colors today. You probably already got the idea just from watching what I've done already. And as you can see, the snake bite does a very, very similar job. It's just a fantastic job of going into those recesses, um, creating the, that shade and then that highlight that you've put in with the white, with the airbrush, all the dry brushing, really, really helps um, just enhance that really. It means you've got a lot less work to do afterwards. For the last one here, I'm going to be using some wildwood different kind of brown to the Saigor, much cooler, um, less red tones in it, so slightly thinner um, and again it will just give you a different fur option. So now that the contrast paint is dry, there is a slight shine to it but we won't worry about that right now. If we need to add some matte varnish afterwards we can do. Um, I want to do a little bit of highlighting. You don't have to. Um, you could you could easily just stick with these and the pre-shades have already done a little bit of natural highlighting for you. I do like it to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to be using some, some colours just to do that. Um, so for the, the kind of lighter colour here, we're going to be using Japanese Uniform. Um, and again, it's just a matter of dry brushing and picking out the top few layers. Over the Gore Hunter first, for the orangey type, I'm going to be using Orange Brown. So these are all model colour paints, and funny enough, all came from the leather paint set, I believe. I've had it for a while now. You can pick them up all in one go, and they're all the whole set's very, very usable. And over the Gore Hunter first, sorry, the Saigor Brown. Over the Saigor Brown going to be dry brushing some chocolate brown, again model colour. And then over the last one which is the wild wood, I'm using flat earth. You can mix the, the browns highlights up a little bit, it doesn't make a massive amount of difference. And then to finish off, using dark sand model colour, one very, very light final touch, just right, mainly on the fronts of their noses, along the tops, just to give a little bit of an extra area of difference. Now I'm gonna attach both strips to the base now for the final stages. I paint most of my bases with a with a kind of a base layer of scale colour petroleum grey. I'm going to be using Vallejo Earth Texture Dark Earth as well. And the reason I've got that now um, is because I want to add 
a small layer in between the two strips because once they're both stuck on it's almost impossible to get your paintbrush in so I just want to deal with this here the little lip on this side and also put some over the hole that you can see in the middle just a good dollop will tend to, tends to solve, solve that problem so I've added the earth texture to the base um, and while that's drying I like to do a couple of extra things now you could leave it here this is absolutely five or ten millimeter fantasy which is when there's gonna be lots on the table but i just do a, a couple of extra things to finish it off but you as i said you could put a couple of bits of flock or some tufts on the base and be done with it so i'm going to use contrast wildwood and then very very subtly a little bit on the palette i just like to go in and, and reinforce a couple of the little shadows here to give it definition <laughs> And, and this is very much an, an optional extra, but it doesn't actually take very long at all. And the effect is quite pleasing. And that's just reinforced it slightly. The next thing I like to do is just pick out their eyes. And I actually use contrast black templar for that. They're so tiny on this. I'm just adding something to represent the shadow really and just darken them out at the moment. They've mostly been picked out by the, the dry brushing I did earlier we just want to take that back to black again and you'd be surprised what that does for uh, definition. And then just picking their teeth out with some model color off white. And this is really the final part of the, the wolf painting, so to speak. you can if you really want to use something like contrast blood angels red and just put tiny little bits in the corners of the mouth it could be blood it could be gums just adds a little bit of color that's different to the the kind of all the earthy tones Heading back to the base now with the earth texture dry, I'm going to be using some good old Agranx earth shade just to cover the textured paint. Next up, once the Agranx earth shade is dry, I add a little bit of pigment. Now this is light sienna. Um, I find that by adding pigments dry like this, you just create more realistic textures on your bases and it's incredibly simple. So I just brush it on. It's hard to go too heavy because you can blow it all off again. Um, I don't fix it afterwards on bases like this. Um, you rarely rub it off unless you're overly handling it and um, because it tends to sit in all of the recesses of the texture, which is exactly where I want it to. Um, you, you don't get your fingers in there anyway. It's the, the outer areas where it brushes off. So we'll take it away and we'll blow it. So we're now ready to add some tufts. And for those, I've been using wall paint. I've seen it for quite a while. And I've been using these two types on most of the armies I'm working on in this sort of scale. So two millimeter dead grass and two millimeter winter. As I've said on other videos in different um, periods and things, it, it go by the color rather than the description. Um, think about uh, where you are in the world or what kind of land you want to uh, uh, reproduce. I wouldn't necessarily say they are definitely winter or dead grass in terms of their description. Um, they, they're absolutely accurate descriptions in one sense, but just pick the colours you like and, and go with the theme really. Um, you'll notice that um, some of them I've cut in half so they've got flat edges to go against the edges of the base, um, but just go around and stick a few on. I then like to use something called Vallejo Thick Mud. Now this, this is European mud. The thick mud is more of an effect, I believe, than a kind of a, a kind of a base texture, but you can use it as a base texture, but it does dry a little bit more translucent. And I've said this in a lot of videos, so apologies to those of you who have watched the, all the epic battles tutorials where I've talked about that. But I'm assuming there will be some different people that come across just for this. Now the reason I use this thick mud, if you put it on a really thick layers, it stays very wet looking. 
you do it in sort of smaller amounts it just adds a little bit of variation in colour it doesn't necessarily always look wet so I've got a mixture of dry in terms of the powders two different colours of tufts and two different types of earth texture it's all really simple it's lots of stages absolutely but it's all very very simple and pretty quick especially with batch painting but what it does I feel is makes the the bases fairly versatile across different sort of setups different battle tables different mats um, so if it's verdant grass there's grass bits on there there's there's dry if it's a little bit more barren if it's a wet muddy field you've got little bit wet, bits of wet mud but it all tends to work together quite nicely and, and is believable on the base and as I always tend to do with with my bases I like to use just plain black for the rim and I've, I've etched it and that's that done now bear in mind this is a small scale army and it's supposed to be large scale army painting so it is techniques to make sure that you've got lots of miniatures on the table here is uh, another stand i've done before as a bit of a test piece again just shows you the different shades of browns and things you can do and uh, when i've got the whole batch of them all done um, they'll all be mixed and there's some blacks and things like that in there as well um, and if you want to see that look out for a future um, Battle of Five Armies vlog when I sort of catch up with my next stage um, but over all in all I think this is um, a really kind of simple way of, of painting these there's no hard techniques in there at all I appreciate some people won't have an airbrush so if you want to find a way around doing things without an airbrush a black prime might not be the way to go um, i'd go with a gray prime from a rattle can and then a dry brush off the white afterwards and you'll get a very very similar effect um, if you are good enough in, with control with your with your rattle cans you could go black prime and then do a dusting of gray and then do a dry brush as well especially if you've got some of the smaller cans like the uh, um, tamiya cans and things like that you might be able to so do a normal black prime and then do a bit of a dusting but you want to be careful you don't want to put too much paint down there's the, the detail is quite shallow on these these older plastic sculpts you might find it a little bit easier on some of the the metals um, but anyway so hopefully some of you have found that useful it's very very basic level painting um, but I know some people like to see how I do things and how I approach it and it's all about mass effect for these and there's a lot to paint so this is a process that means you can get a lot of them done fairly fairly quickly if you are new to the channel have a look at the other videos there's some um, battle of five armies bits on there a bit about the project that I'm, that I'm taking on and there'll be lots more to come as i paint up units and do some painting tutorials on them and sort of talk you through my progress on the vlog there's also some some large scale middle earth on there a, a little bit and there will be a little bit more in the future and then there's lots of um, napoleonic and american civil war content um, in sort of just under 15 mil and 30.5 mil warlord epic and some bolt action as well so there's a lot of different things to suit different people um, I will continue to do lots of painting tutorials because that's my thing and so I hope you've enjoyed it thanks very much for watching take care